an obscure Queen song. No one ever talks about this song. Yeah. I don't remember exactly why I chose this one, but I think it's like kind of one of their more metal songs. That's probably why I chose it. Yeah. And yeah, maybe we could talk about their place in the canon. Of metal. Well, speaking of over-the-top singers. Yeah, Freddie Mercury. Bombastic, flamboyant, over-the-top. Awesome. I love him. (laughs) Dude, it's so much fun to sing those songs. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, let's not have fun. It's too cringe. Sorry. <laughs> that my asshole comment of the day. There's no fun allowed in music. Let's talk about the mix. Yeah. So it's apparent to me that what is important to the band and the producer is the guitars and the vocals. So many layers of those. Mm-hmm. And you could kind of hear the drums getting buried. Yeah, they get the kind of drowned out. And I have a theory. I feel like they had a mix where the drum sounded consistent but because of all of the other layers the snare in particular and the kick drum just sounded too quiet so my theory is that they simply raised the fader and that's it and then the result of that is like a low impact sounding snare drum Mm -hmm. it doesn't sound loud and big it just sounds volume wise it does the way it sits in the mix it's loud but it doesn't have that impact Yeah. And as much as I love Queen and their guitar sound and their vocals, that's one of my biggest pet peeves in the entire world is like when guitars take up the whole mix. Right. Yeah. Those drums need to be nice and loud. Yeah. It's a shame too, because Roger Taylor is an amazing drummer. Yeah. And those drum fills are cool, like on the toms, but it's like... So when like the rest of the band drops out, that's when he does his drum fills on the toms. And it sounds great. Yeah. He's a great drummer. But when it's in the mix of everything else playing, it's lacking unbalanced or something yeah Yeah, it's an unbalanced mix and then um those uh, vocal harmonies they sound like they're very loud when they pop in and it's like yeah and i also wanted to say like if cardboard was the like characteristic sound of 70s drums production i feel like the snare sounds like a stack of papers (laughs) (laughs) it sounds like this I'm just slapping my uh, bullet journal. <laughs> well, that's a hot take. Is it? I don't know. I don't know. Just talking about how the drum production is kind of lacking. So anything Anyways. else about Queen? Um, are they metal? Sorry for yelling. Is this even metal? I mean, the guitars sound pretty metal. Yeah, all the guitar harmonies that Brian May does. That's a very iconic thing of metal. Yeah, the wailing vocals we already talked about. Metal is like a place that Queen visits every once in a while. Yeah, that's like how it is. It makes sense. They also do grandma music and like show tunes and... <laughs> Opera. Opera. Mm-hmm. Good band. Oh, yeah. So... We talked about Queen. Now let's talk about a little Queen. Oh, yeah. I like that segue. Nice segue. Thank you. I got segues, too. <laughs> I'm not just a peanut gallery. <laughs> <laughs> I had something here about Bill Ward. You did already mention him. Oh, when we talk about um, Rainbow in the Dark, we'll get back to that. So though. let's follow Mark's little queen segue. <laughs> the idea is, I guess, derivative of Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Um... That's kind of the theme. Wait, we weren't supposed to say that name only once. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to we're gonna be talking about Led Zeppelin uh, quite a bit. I... Or a little bit in this part. I know we talk crap about Led Zeppelin, but I would not deny the influentialness of John Bonham. I'm just messing around here. Also, the influence of the whole band on Heart. Heart, yeah. the Wilson sisters, Anne Wilson and Nancy Wilson, they were big fans of Led Zeppelin. I feel like they sort of modeled their band on Led Zeppelin from their like hard blues rock tunes to their more folky stuff. In particular, the drummer... We're going to talk about John Bonham again. Like John Bonham raised the bar in terms of drums sounding big and huge in like hard rock context. And the drummer in this band, Michael DeMosier, sort of the same thing, same kind of thing. And he also was influenced by the, the big band swing drummers when he was a kid, like Buddy Rich and Gene Krupa. And that's the way he preferred his drums to sound was like that era. He had like a simple combo kit, like a swing kit. And he didn't like putting portholes on his bass drum. He didn't like dampening his drum heads. And that is relevant because for their 
previous album, Dreamboat Annie, they worked with the producer Mike Flicker, where he sort of just had a process of recording everything the same way. I believe he, he also did like TV ads and like radio ads and stuff like that. And with every genre of music, he just had his process. And Michael Demosier, at the time of their first album, Hart's first album, he was like the new guy. So he didn't really want to like push anyone. And he just he sort of just let Mike Flicker dampen his drums and like put a hole in his bass drum and stuff like that because that's just what they did at the time that was like in vogue in at this point in the seventies. Maybe for some extra credit for the listeners, they can put on Magic Man. Yeah, listen to Magic Man or Crazy on You. There's some pretty metal songs. Yeah, in that those album. are heavy songs, but you'll hear the difference between the drum sound of those songs and the drum sound of this song, Barracuda. And the reason why it's so different is because Michael Demosier for the second album sort of asserted himself a bit more to Mike Flicker, who they worked with again for this album, Little Queen. He didn't want his drum heads dampened. He didn't want the hole on his bass drum. So Mike Flicker just worked with him on that so he could get the drum sound that he preferred. And he did like a lot of stuff like with his beater. He got the felt from a mallet for his like gong or something and put it on his bass drum beater. Then he like dipped it in resin or something so it'd have like some okay, more it. solid. Because he didn't want the hole, he had to do other things so Mike Flicker would be satisfied. But they worked together to get this sound and I think the result is awesome. I believe Demogier said that he he believed that each track should be treated differently in terms of yeah. recording the drums, but Flicker initially, like for Dreamboat Annie, kind of just had the same the process same thing, for right. every song. That's a good point because Heart, they have a lot of variety in their albums. Kind of like Led Zeppelin, they have like some folky stuff where they're playing like mandolins and like acoustic guitars. And yeah, the, a snare drum so, and, and like the bass drums should sound different in those kinds of songs. And maybe the the drum production of the first album, that was more appropriate. But for a song like Barracuda, it needs to hit harder. And Michael Demosier wanted his drums to breathe like it does in like a swing drum kit of like big band. You've got some cat interference, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll hear it. Let's just listen to the track. And just listen to that drum fill opening after that guitar riff. And then the drum beat that immediately follows. You'll hear it immediately. Okay, here's Heart Barracuda. 